So in my most recent video, I messed around with the CAN bus, causing some opens and some shorts, and we did that on a Ford Fiesta. Uh, today what we're doing is we're doing the same thing on a different module, but this time on a 2007 Toyota Camry. So I've got my breakout box set up just like before, plugged into the data link connector, and we are live right now looking at the communication with just key on, and uh, just like we would expect, we are, uh, let's pause that in a different spot there. Okay, just like we'd expect, we're sitting at two and a half volts right there at the recessive. We're getting pulled up to three and a half on the high side, one and a half down on the low side. We put on this math channel like we talked about doing before, and we're looking at the differential voltage between the high and the low, which should be two volts down to zero volts, and that's exactly what we're seeing right there. So uh, this is what it should look like. Now let's go cause some problems and we'll see if we have the same sort of um, results as we had when we looked at the Ford. Okay, so this time what I've done is I've depinned the high, the high side out of the PCM right here. So we've caused an open there. Let's see what that does to our signal. Okay, I'll show you this live real quick. So you can see it's mostly affected our low side, it looks like. But when you really get in there close, you see that where it's supposed to be sitting at that recessive 2.5 volts, both high and low are having trouble hitting that target. It's more like, uh, let's see, about 1.9. And then the high side's getting pulled up all the way to 3.7 and then the low side's barely fluctuating at all so on this Toyota that's what we're seeing with an open on the high side let's let's see what it looks like with an open on the low side next okay so you can see that I've got the open now on the on the low side so let's see how that is affecting our wave this time let's go live again here and as you would expect, it's doing the exact opposite of what we saw when we had the open on the high side. Okay, trouble again in this middle zone where it's having a, a difficult time staying at that recessive two and a half. In this case now it's up at three. Our high side's getting pulled all the way up to like 3.7. And then the low side's getting pulled down all the way to Right over there 1.2 and then again watching that uh, math channel we've created our differential voltages is uh, not something the computer can read right so um, yeah now let's do some short circuits on the high and the low side and we'll see what we get with those okay so we got it set up now as a short to ground on the low side so let's see what that does And as expected, the low side is pulled all the way to zero, but the high side, we have those like sawtooth type patterns that we've seen before. Looks like from zero up to four, sometimes less volts there. Okay, let's see what happens when we short the high side to ground. So I moved the T-pin over to the high side now, and we're looking at the live data and it looks like when the high side shorted to ground, both sides basically read uh, zero volts. A little activity going on there, but not nearly what we saw when we, when we only shorted the low side. Okay, now we're gonna short them to power and see what changes. So we're still on the high side now and I just moved it over to uh, short to power. Let's see what that does. So we're gonna have to change the range a bit. Okay, so high side is sitting pretty much flatlined at battery voltage, and the low side is making those sawtooths that we saw earlier. Okay, now I will short the low side to power. Okay, now we're looking at the low side shorted to power and both high and low are sitting at battery voltage. Interesting, pretty different from that Ford that we did before. 
Okay, so the only thing we haven't done is we haven't tried shorting the two sides of the network together. So we've got that set up now. And when we go back and look at our scope, this is what we're getting. So looks like they're just both stuck at the recessive two and a half volts. Tiny bits of activity going on, but no messages being being recognized on that network there. Okay, so this is quite different from what we saw on that Ford. Uh, let's uh, make maybe make a table and we'll we'll analyze the difference of what we saw on the Ford Fiesta uh, versus this Toyota Camry. Okay, so I've made this easy to read table so that we can see the difference between that Ford Fiesta and that Toyota Camry that we looked at. Um, everything highlighted in red is where there's major differences. Green is where they were pretty much the same. And then um, on some of them, like the shorts to to ground on the low side, short to power on the high side, and when they were shorted together, they were kind of the same, but there were some minor differences between the two. So you can go through that chart and look those over. What this makes me want to do next is do at least one more make. And then I think I also have a question on the Toyota Camry. We disconnected the PCM to do this, this testing and the PCM happens to have the termination resistor on that Toyota Camry versus the Ford Fiesta. We just disconnected uh, a module under the seat has no termination resistor in it. So is there a difference between causing shorts and opens on the module that has the termination resistor versus the one that doesn't? So expect to see at least two more videos covering these two topics, these two questions that I have, but that's it for this one.